what do you, now that we're talking about it, this, this was something I wanted to ask you about. Are there gender roles, gender responsibilities, gender specific lanes, specific to marriage, a Christian marriage between a, a man and a woman that are cultural and we've just said, well, this is, this is how it ought to be. Uh, they're, they're extra biblical. And, and the, other, the other side of that is, are there, are there things that, no, like God made it really clear, men need to do this and women are to do this. One such topic, uh, and this is spurred on by a book that uh, Corinne and some of her other friends kind of in, in, in our community or people that we know are reading a book that explores a lot of popular Christian marriage literature and it gives instructions for sex, it gives instructions for work, it gives instructions for parenting, all these pieces of Christian literature that are very popular, bestsellers. And the book Corinne is reading with some of her friends unpacks a lot of this literature and says, hey, is this actually right? Is this, yeah. you know, uh, so maybe the James Dobsons of the world or, yeah. or otherwise. Um, and so they're in the throes of trying to discover like, okay, we've been told this our whole lives by these really popular books that our youth pastor gave us or yeah. our pastors gave us. Is this actually right according to the Bible or is this just a cultural idea that, that's not right? Um, are there, is there, so is there anything you can think of that's like, oh, this is a really popular idea that's not true at all, that's, that's not biblical? Well, I don't know if it's popular, uh... But it, it, it was practiced a lot back in my generation of, you know, if you're a, the whole deal, if you're a wife mm -hmm. or a mother, you need to stay home mm -hmm. and, and cook mm -hmm. and clean and mm -hmm. whatever. And the guy goes and makes the money right. or whatever. Right. Well, things have changed a great, great deal. Is that a biblical idea, though? <clears throat> like, why do people think that's a biblical idea? That's a better question. Because I think we take the idea of submission and uh, we try to put submission into a uh, hierarchy mm -hmm. where the biblical concept of submission is not hierarchy. Mm -hmm. It's service. Yeah. You know, if I am submitting to God and I am submitting to my wife, it means that I am putting her needs mm -hmm. and her goals and her life ahead of me. So mm -hmm. I am... To submit means you get under mm -hmm. something and yep. hold it up. Yep. So, uh, you know, the, the scripture in Ephesians 5, that where we get all the stuff about the family, where Paul dealt with the family, starts off like this. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the imperative verb. Mm -hmm. Participles modifying it. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, yeah. giving thanks always unto the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Mm -hmm. Then under that submission participle comes the application of wives, here's how you submit. Husbands, here's how you submit. Parents, here's how you submit. Children, here's how you submit. Yeah. So all of it comes under the big principle of submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways that, that I feel like is more biblical of dealing with role models in the family is what I would call functional submission. Sure. And that is you submit on the basis of function. Okay, my wife was better at keeping the books, our personal books, yeah, right. than I, I am. First of all, she's detailed. And secondly, I try to keep it in my head. It doesn't work. When you don't have much money, you can keep it in your head. <laughs> but, you know, I would forget to stub a check or something, uh -huh. and we'd be in trouble. Sure, yeah. So she, she was better at that, and she wanted to do it. And so I didn't feel like she was taking away my leadership authority. Yeah, right. It's like we agreed she, she does that. She was also a nurse. Yeah. So... I mean, one occasion we we were one of the early arrivers out of an accident, mm -hmm. and so people are hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, I could have jumped up and said, "I'm the leader yeah, of this family. Right, right. I'm the boss." Yeah, 
you know, do this, and people would have died. Mm -hmm. Basically, I got out and said, what do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm submitting to her function, her skill, yeah. her, mm -hmm. her level. So, so I, I think we, as we submit to one another and we recognize, yes, there is a difference, mm -hmm. which our culture is trying to say there's no difference. Mm -hmm. No, we're equal and we're equally valuable, but mm -hmm. we're, we're different. We are different. Yep. And she's going to see things differently. And she is. She has abilities to to do things differently. So if I got any sense at all, I will submit to what she is better at. Yeah. And if she's got any sense, she'll recognize where I am. Yeah. And, and so I would I would say that is that is a better general thing than trying to come up with all these rigid deals of females do this, yeah. males do that, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. So one. That's all really helpful to me. I appreciate you unpacking it. One such area that I know is still a popular idea, and I really don't know, you and I haven't talked about this, I don't think, but there's an idea in Western Christian culture, at least, and specific to the South, maybe not specific to the South. What I mean is I'm in the South and I hear it in the South. Uh -huh. I'm not, I don't live in the Northern part of the U.S. where there's different cultural nuances, but... I hear from Christian men that they believe it's their wives' duty to like please them sexually, and that's like that is a that is one such form of submission, uh, even if the woman is is disinterested, let's say, or um, like the, it's their it's their duty to please their husband sexually, even if they're um, you know, maybe even if they're just after childbirth or, you know, um, maybe on their monthly menstrual cycle or something like that, they're still to please their husband sexually. So he has sexual needs and impulses that need to be satisfied by his wife one way or another, whether she feels like it or not. And I know m plenty of men who believe that that's a biblical idea, that, that their wife has a duty to do that. Yeah, they, they probably got that out of third chapter of Hezekiah. <laughs> Have you never heard men who think oh, that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I've wanted to believe that myself. <laughs> <laughs> we need to cut that out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the scripture de deal is man and woman, do yeah. not withhold your body from your sure. from your partner mm -hmm. unless you agree on it for a period of fasting mm -hmm. of fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. No, you, when, when you become one, you belong to each other. Yeah. But love for that would, is taking consideration of the other person's mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. their mood, their emotional status. Mm -hmm. All of that ne needs to be considered. Men do not have a God-given right to have all their sex drives satisfied just because they want it to. That's good. Uh, you know, marriage is about giving yourself to another. Mm -hmm. So if, for whatever reason, whether she says it's a headache or mm -hmm. a mood or whatever, uh, she's exhibiting some need there. Yep. If that's going on. Mm -hmm. And if if I love her, then I am w willing to be patient and yep. find out what's really going on with yep. us. Having her emotional needs met as well as her, her physical yep. needs, it should be more important to me than mine. Yeah. And, and a man that can't control his sex drive any more than that yeah. ne needs to go back and and realize, you know, First Corinthians seven, you know, you, no, First Thessalonians four. Yeah. You you can control. Yeah. I mean, it, it is not the boss. Yeah, that's good. I'm just telling you that I know, and and I know men who aren't that much older than me who believe that. I probably know men my age who believe that. And that's been a that was an adjustment because I came into marriage with that idea, and and I don't know that I would have ever been so bold as to say I have a right to your yeah. body, Corinne. But functionally and subconsciously, I believed that, and that's been a way of thinking that's had to be dismantled. That you know was was an idea that was prevalent whenever I was growing up. I'm not saying from from my family, but just cultural Christian ideas that I would read about or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know how much I believed that until I got married. And um, I will say, our since that way of thinking has been laid down and the Lord has dismantled that, like my marriage vitality and flourishing has increased 
yeah. greatly in every way. Uh, yeah. And I'm really grateful for that. So yeah, I would like to encourage all younger men. I wish somebody had told me this earlier. You know, learn to be intimate without yeah. intercourse. Right. Yep. I mean, good. laying with each other, holding each other, walking mm -hmm. with each other, holding hands. Yeah. You know, rubbing noses to each other. You know, <laughs> uh, just, just enjoying the the connection. Sure. Yeah, I, I wish I had done that more. Yeah, that's good. You know, and and I, <laughs> I remember some of our earlier sexual talks as husband and wife is like, okay, honey, I, I, I don't want you to have sex if you don't want to, but I want you to want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not fun unless you're having fun. But right. would you please have fun? <laughs> well, that's a. That's a dead end street yeah, right there. Right. So it's like, okay, once you back off and go, okay, why aren't you having fun? And yeah. sometimes it is just physical sure. and then sometimes it is emotional and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. That's good.